Hello, everybody. Hi, Karen. We're going to start in just a minute. Hi, Carrie. Hi, Stella. So, hi, Barbara. So we have a question, what are we talking about tonight? We're going to first start off with something that's just going to relax us. Then we're going to do a little activity to give us some insight. And we're gonna wrap up by activating our serotonin, which is known as the happy hormone. And we'll get started in just a minute. People are starting to come in. So I wanted to tell everybody about Circles of Wisdom while we're waiting for a few more people to come in. Circles of Wisdom is doing live events like this, 7.30 p.m., three times a week. And it's to keep everybody engaged. Anyone that knows the owner of Circles of Wisdom knows Kathy's very dedicated to raising consciousness. And this is one way she's decided to do it as we sequester ourselves. Circles of Wisdom also has a new shipment that just came in of candles and incense. And of course, with the holidays, lots of religious statues in case anyone wants to do some shopping. They have a concierge service, which I thought was really smart, where you can call in and they'll walk you around the store, show you what they have, you pick it out, and then curbside pickup. Doesn't get any easier. With Love and Gratitude, it's a nonprofit organization. We've been around over 15 years. We are a team of light workers dedicated to education and service, each with our own special gifts, each committing to be of service by giving as many free events as we can and raising money for charity. That's our main mission. And you can see us on www.withloveandgratitude. So, if you have any questions, there's a little delay on um, Facebook Live, but if you have any questions, just type them in and I'll answer them as we go. And for those of you that have come in, thank you so much. So we're going to start with a kind of odd exercise, but before we do, I want you to check in with your neck. Notice your neck. You might want to move it around gently, of course. And just notice what it feels like. If there's any areas that move nice and without any resistance and some areas maybe that have a little more tension, let's move around just a little bit so that you get a feeling of what's going on in your neck. Exactly what's going on. And then just take a nice breath. Exhaling gently and take one more, making that exhale nice and long. Just letting go of the day. 
And now what we're going to do is you're going to take both your thumb and forefinger and at the very top of your ear with your forefinger in the back of your ear. And by the way, these instructions are ridiculous, but bear with me. I think you'll like the results. So your forefinger goes to the very top of your ear in the back and your thumb goes to where the ridge of the ear is. And then you move your thumb outward going over the ridge, so you're pulling out, and then you very slowly move down your ear, just rolling your thumb over the ridge, and breathe, and you take your time, and it's a silly little thing. It does look kind of ridiculous. And then when you get to the bottom of your ear, Tug three times and go back to the top of your ear and repeat. And you might take some satisfaction in knowing that no one can see you look silly. Just taking your thumb and rubbing it across the ridge, going down your ear quite slowly. And when you get to the bottom of your ear, you pull three times and you do it once more. And thank you everybody for the hearts. And pull. Now, move your neck. What you've done is you've just acupressured all the major points in your neck. So you should be feeling much better, much looser. I hope that worked for you. I was taught that by an acupuncturist. So I don't know if anyone's ever heard of cocologies. A cocology is a um, story but it has some technical background to it. I found them kind of fun. The word kokology means mind or spirit in Japanese. Kokology, according to its authors, offers a unique approach to self-discovery. So we'll be doing that tonight. A window to your soul, some say. Cocologies present a series of psychological and hypothetical questions that are oriented to reveal your hidden attitudes about life. It's essentially a game of self-discovery that can provide interesting and often hilarious insight by answering questions to seemingly innocent topics. So what we're going to do tonight is I'm going to read you a quick little story and then I'm going to ask you some questions and you're going to answer them and we're going to see what we get. You ready? The bluebird. One day a beautiful bluebird suddenly flies through the window into your room and it's trapped, but it's not anxious. It just sits and looks at you. Something about this lost bird charms you. And there does seem to be a mutual attraction because the bird's just sitting there enjoying you. You decide you're going to keep the bird. The next day, when you get up, to your great surprise, the bird has changed color from blue to yellow. You, have, you don't know why. Again, you go to bed and you get up the next day and the birds change color again. Third day, it's bright red. And on the fourth day, when you get up, it's completely black. What color is the bird when you wake up on the fifth day? Here's your four choices. You ready? The bird doesn't change color, it stays black. That's number one. The bird turns back to its original beautiful blue. The bird turns white. The bird turns golden color. 
The bird that flew into your room seems like a symbol of good fortune, but then it changed color, making you wonder if happiness would last. So this is your cocology. This is their psychological interpretation. Your reaction to the situation shows how you would respond to difficulties and uncertainties in real life. And this has basis in Jung's um, psycholo psychology. Just so you know, it does have some scientific background. So let's begin. Let's figure out what this means for you. Those who said the bird stays black have a pessimistic outlook. Do you tend to believe that once a situation goes bad, it never returns to normal? Maybe you need to try thinking, if it is bad as it gets, it can't get any worse. Remember, there's no rain that doesn't end and no night so dark that there's no dawn the next day. All right, that was black. Now, what if it turns blue again? Those who said the bird turns blue again are practical optimists. You believe that life is a mix of good and bad, and it doesn't pay to fight against reality. You accept adversity calmly and let things run their course without undue stress or worry. This outlook lets you ride out the waves of adversity without being swept away. Okay, that was blue. How many of you said the bird turns white? Those who said the bird turns white are cold and decisive under pressure. You don't waste time on fretting in indirection or indecision. When a crisis develops, if the situation gets too bad, you feel it's better to cut your losses and look for another route rather than getting bogged down in needless grief. This proactive approach means things seem to go just naturally your way. That was white. And finally, gold. Those who said the bird turned golden can be described as fearless. You don't know the meaning of pressure to you in every crisis is an opportunity. You might be compared with Napoleon who said impossible, the word is not French. But be careful not to let your boundless confidence get the best of you. It's a very fine line be fear, between fearless and foolhardy. So for those of you that this is your first cocology, you can ask yourself, if it resonated. There's many others, some longer, some shorter, but always, always interesting. Now, how many of you know what serotonin is? Serotonin is used to transmit messages between the nerve cells. It's thought to be active in constricting smooth muscles, and it contributes to well being and to happiness, among other things. It's a precursor for melatonin. It helps regulate the body's sleep wake cycles and internal clock. Tapping how many of you know tapping? Some people call it EFT. It's a combination of ancient Chinese acupressure and modern psychology. It works to literally alter your brain energy system and body all at once. And we're gonna give it a shot and see what happens. The practice consists of tapping with your fingers on specific meridian points. And I will walk you through that. But before I do, I want you to notice how you feel physically and mentally. Where you at right now? Just take a moment and scan your body. As you do that, breathe. Take a deep breath, make, make the exhale long and soft, no forcing, no pushing. 
And the reason why I tell you to do that is because through breath, you can relate and connect to your body in a more effective way. So if you benchmark where you're at now, how you feel physically and emotionally, you can then mark that against how you feel after we do our serotonin tapping. So I'll just ask you to take one more deep breath and notice what's happening inside you. What emotion do you feel? Where in your body are things flowing freely? Where in your body are things stuck? Do you have pain? One more deep breath. Good. Okay. So serotonin is a chemical. It impacts every part of your body, from your emotions to your motor skills, which is why I wanted you to check in before we got going. So you can see if there's a differential when we end. Serotonin is considered a natural mood stabilizer. Let's go. It's a chemical that helps with sleeping, eating, and digesting. And I find it, it helps me feel good. So I'm gonna give you a set of instructions. And again, they might seem weird, but just follow along and see where it takes you. Good news, no one's watching. Okay, we're gonna start by blink your eyes for 20 seconds. Don't forget to breathe. Now you ready? Tilt your head to the left shoulder while bringing your eyes to the left and tap on the right side behind the ear at the curve at the base of the skull eight times or so. You don't have to be perfect. Tilt your head to the right while bringing the eyes to the right and tap on the left side behind the ear at the curve of the base of the skull around eight times. And we're going to repeat this four times going back and forth from left to right. Keep breathing. With the head facing forward on the side of the neck about two inches behind the ear, tap eight times. First on the left, and then on the right. And we're going to repeat that four times. No pressure. You don't have to be perfect. Keep breathing. If you hold your breath, I, this will not work. And I've lost count. I think we have one more. With one finger, tap above the upper lip, right in the center, below the nose for about 20 seconds. Go. Take a breath and do it again. Now 
with the fingers of your right hand, tap back and forth in the indents below the collarbone to the sides of the breastbone, like this. And a few more. Now, with your right hand, rub the indent in front of the left shoulder in a circular motion, clockwise 24 times, and then counterclockwise 24 times. And breathe. And then counterclockwise. Using the fingers of the right hand, rub below the best breast of bone the third chakra in a circular motion. The third chakra is a couple of inches above your belly button. We're gonna do that 24 times clockwise, 24 times counterclockwise. Don't have to be perfect. It's okay if you lose count. Just trust. And that started to feel so good, I definitely lost count. And breathe. And when you're ready, sit back, sit quiet. Take six gentle, deep breaths, making the exhale a little longer each time if you can. How do you feel? Hopefully you have serotonin rushing through your body. I'm smiling. I hope you are too. Tomorrow I'm going to be back for a 90 minute workshop where we're going to explore through telepathic healing. It's going to be an interactive workshop. I like to do exercises where you get involved. The Power of Telepathic Healing is going to be an interactive workshop, healing ourselves and then healing our health workers. What we're going to do is we're going to create and utilize collective consciousness. We're going to build it, heal ourselves, harmonize ourselves, balance ourselves, and then take that energy that we've created and send it out 
to all those people that are trying to combat the virus. I want to thank you all for being present tonight. It was my honor and my joy to be here with you. I want to thank Circles of Wisdom for doing this. It's free, people. Does it get better than that? And it's something to do that's awesome. So thank you, Circles of Wisdom. Thank you, everyone that's been present. Have a wonderful evening. Bye. With love and with gratitude for all that there is, especially you. Stay well, stay healthy.